good day. In another video, we had talked about the books we have published so far about the customizable and adaptable methodology for managing project. And we ended that video with an introduction of this book, which is basically Project Management Beyond Waterfall and Agile. In this video, I'm going to focus on this book a little bit more. Obviously, the name is kind of challenging, and that's to invite you, the reader, the practitioner of project management, to challenge the current reality of the word that exists in project management with many of the misconceptions that exist. So we chose a name to go beyond the ongoing debate and argument that we see online and the fighting between waterfall and agilists or agile supporters and which is right, is agile or waterfall. What many people have forgotten that project management has always been good project management, has been an adaptive project management. And the word adaptive for us here doesn't mean agile. Adaptive means that a good organization, mature organization in the practice of project management must have methods and methodologies and organizational project management system to fit the organizational need and the type of project and the size and the complexity of the project. A good project management has never been one size fits all. So this is why project management in general is adaptive. Now, recently we've been seeing a lot of trend about Agile and trying to promote Agile as the answer to project management. What many people who are promoting Agile, unfortunately some of them don't even know what it means. They don't know the difference between Agile with a capital A or Agility. So they debate things they don't know, unfortunately. They claim things that are good, and they call them as agile, but in reality, those are good old traditional project management practices. So we wanted in this book that is based on a methodology that we developed in 2007, and in this book, it's version three of the customizable and adaptable methodology for managing project. And what we wanted to present is that camp goes beyond the debate on waterfall and agile. Actually, Waterfall and Agile are development life cycle method, if you wish, which means they fit within a project methodology. So to us, a methodology like CAMP is end-to-end. -end. It's a project life cycle methodology that takes the project from idea to closure and even beyond. So as we work on the project from concept to feasibility to defining high level and business requirement, to go into strategic aspect and project management planning, to go into detailed planning, then we go to the delivery phase of CAMP. And the delivery phase of CAMP, that is where concepts like agile, quote unquote, method, or scrum, or Kanban, or even waterfall apply in the development part of a product, in the construction of a software, if we can use that term. So if we want to develop software or we want to develop an online course and we want to use agile practices, sure, we can use that, but only as a subset of project management lifecycle. So what we are saying here and what we are emphasizing here that CAMP is a great project management methodological approach that is based on some life cycle that has to be customized and adapted or tailored to the fit in a specific organization culture, type of project, size and complexity of a project. And then when we reach the actual development or delivery of the product, that is where concepts like waterfall or agile apply. We are going to expand a little bit more, so be patient with us. I still haven't talked about the books in detail, but we're talking about the mission of this book, the vision behind CAMP, why we develop CAMP, why do we need to go beyond waterfall and agile. Allow me to also say a few words about the picture. We chose this picture to represent that ideally we should follow a proven path. And that's why we need organizational project management system. That is why we need to establish standard methods 
for the various type of the project that organization do. So we have the proven pass. However, we see this little guy here jumping off. And that is to represent that sometime we have to go beyond the paved pass. We have to go beyond a specific road. We have to go into uncharted area. We have to be pioneer. We have to break away from conventional wisdom. So unless you are ready to break away from conventional wisdom, there is a challenge that you might be just following orders or following instruction or following guides that are blindly. And that's not the intent. Again, I repeat something I've said in another video is what I've learned from my 15 years old son at the time. When he was coaching his 12 years old, he was telling him a brother. So he was telling him, Akkad, you need to challenge everything you hear. Don't just trust everything you see on the internet. And as we said before, we build on what Sumer said and basically tell you, look, challenge everything even if you hear from us. Challenge us. Read this book and challenge us on it. Yeah, we'll be happy to hear from you because that will only strengthen what we can offer and would help us improve for the future practitioners and others in project management. Now here I need to jump into the book itself. And CAMP. CAMP is a three-dimensional model. What does that mean? It's based on three main dimensions. And let's be open, honest, and modest. We did not invent the wheel here. I personally have pr more than 30 years of experience. When I developed this, I probably had about 20 plus years of experience working on project management from small to mega project all over the world. So a lot of my knowledge and experience and horror stories and good stories I have captured in my practice and I have built into this methodology. However, yeah, I've also used uh, references from ISO 21500 and Pomba Guide and IPMA Competence Baseline and GPM Global Sustainability and CII, the Construction Industry Institute Best Practices. So I've learned over the years from all of these organizations because all of them have great value to offer. Yes, but unfortunately, each one of them focus on an area. PMI and ISO focus on process. IPMA focus on competence. How to blend all of that together? That's what I tried to do in this methodology, and this is why we came up with a three-dimensional model. The first dimension focus on the project life cycle, which is this is the life cycle that is generic, and then, of course, you need to customize, tailor based on your need. However, what we come up with, we think we can use almost on any project anywhere. So dimension one is a project life cycle, and that was ba based on our work that we have built over time and based on our global experience of the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the project life cycle is the approach that we must use to manage projects end to end. Let me put this book down and then I'll come back to it in a minute. And then the second dimension. And we are working now on a course on applying the Pumba guide. And one statement we've made in that course is that if you really want to understand the Pumba guide, don't think of it as a project management book. Think of it as phase management book. The processes that are used in the Pumba guide are ideal to manage a phase of the project. Now, this might be a weird opinion for some. Actually, this is what the Pumba says in a way. And we will expand on that more into that course. But here, let's stay focused on camp. So what we have felt is to manage project end to end, we need dimension one, which is the project life cycle. To manage a phase or a stage of the project, a piece of the project, we must follow the processes such as what's been discussed in the PMBAG and ISO. So dimension two is based on the processes to manage a phase or a stage of a project. So the foundation for that dimension lies in the PMBAG and ISO, and then we have taken that, challenged it, and modified it. So we did not take it as is. Now moving on to dimension three, said, okay, if you want to practice project management, good project management, what you have to follow is the following. You have to have a life cycle, 
which is good enough maybe for small and micro project. As project get larger, good project management requires the application of the process groups of PMI and ISO. And that should give you good result. If your system and methodologies are based on that, that should be very good work. Now if you want to elevate your performance to a higher level, that is where we need to go to the third dimension. And the third dimension focus on what we call advanced topics, including things like the IPMA competence baseline, the GBM global standard for sustainability in project management, best practices from an organization like CII, and the project success. So there are four chapters in this book dealing with dimension three, one of them focusing on the competence pair IPMA. We don't go into too much detail, but we just at least introduce it. We introduce sustainability in project management pairs the GPM global standard. And number three, we follow on, explain or introduce best practices with a touch on the CII best practices as the most highly recognized reference for best practices in the capital project industry. And then number four was the model we have developed to link to CAMP which is project success model, or the four dimension of project success. So basically what uh, this book focus on is there are many sections focusing on CAMP being a three-dimensional model. There are some introductory sections that talks about project management in general and the current reality of project management practice. There is a, chap uh, a section with a few chapters that focus on uh, introducing an organizational project management system, the rationale behind why we develop this methodology, including, including um, maybe an overview of the methodology. And then we have other section. Each one of them is dedicated to one dimension. So we have one section dedicated to the project life cycle dimension, and it has nine chapters because we have one chapter for every stage of the project where is the standard model. Then we have a second section, which is dedicated for the process of managing a phase or a stage of the project. And that is where we have introduced the processes per the way SUCAD had modified them. And there are a few chapters here as well. And then there is a section on the third dimension, and uh, that explains introduction to the competence and uh, best practices that we have just talked about. The book is not finished yet. Those are basically the detailed explanation of the concept of the methodology. What missing is how to fulfill the name of the methodology. What do we mean here? The name of the methodology is customizable and adaptable methodology. So, how to translate theory into real life? and to practice. We ended the book with two sections. One section, and each section includes many chapters. Each, the one section focus on managing across the stages. Uh, this is the section where we focus on bridging and linking dimension one and dimension two, if you wish. How do we manage cost? at the stage level and at the project level. How to manage risk and what's the difference when we talk about risk management. The process is clear, but on a project, risk management is not just something we do once. We have project-related risk and we have stage-related risk. How do we manage that? We talk about that. Change management. We have change related to the whole project and we have changes probably within a phase of a project. When do we approve the project? Some people say the charter, but the charter is just one document. Technically, on along the life cycle, how many times do we approve the project? How many estimates should we have along the life cycle? How many risk management exercise? How many stage management plan or management plan? All of these are discussed in the section that again link Dimension one, which is a life cycle model, with dimension two, which is the processes to manage a stage. The last section of the book 
focus on staying with the, uh, with the spirit of applying the methodology. The last section of the book focus on how to customize the methodology, how to adapt the methodology. What are the project classification? How do we differentiate the management of a small, simple, or micro project versus medium or large, complex, or mega project? They cannot be managed, even within the same industry. You cannot manage, let's say, in engineering construction. We cannot manage building a house the same way we manage building a tower, the same way we, we will build a city. Yeah. Yes, in principle, the life cycle could be identical, However, the level of effort, the detail, the, uh, the need, the, the logistics, the complexity um, requires some modification, uh, not to the process. We still have to authorize phases. We still have to plan phases. We still have to uh, implement the work. We still have to control and close. So there is no change there. However, when we talk about the full life cycle, there are changes that we must adhere to and we must understand the level of complexity that come with a different type of project. Some project could be very simple and maybe could be done in weeks or days with few people and some project might require thousands of people. So we have to tailor to that. We have to customize and adapt the methodology to fit that in addition to fitting the organizational culture, the governance preferences and all other aspects. We also have a chapter here about how, for example, service providers, contractor, consultant can use the methodology. Uh, because the methodology could be seen that as an owner-based methodology, but it's not. It could be used by anybody, anywhere, on any type of project. You've heard enough? One more. We close this book with ideas on how to tailor and apply. Next, what you should be looking for in the near future, the next few months, maybe within a year, that more books and ebooks that actually showing case studies of how we actually applied the methodology. We have used the methodology on organizing event. I am using the methodology right now on a program and a project and we are documenting a wonderful case study that in that case study we will actually even include some project done with waterfall, some project done with partial incremental, and some projects are used truly incremental or agile. The same type of project, so in a way we will be showing you how this methodology is actually the umbrella. CAMP is the methodology that you use whether you go with waterfall or agile or anything else. And then how those concepts, agile or waterfall, fit as a subset, I repeat, as a subset of CAMP. So we will be publishing case studies for small project and micro project. We will be publishing case studies for large, larger project, say large or larger. We don't have a full case study yet for large complex project, but we have actually written a book we haven't published yet that where we use CAMP as, and we use actually we, on a, as a sample document. So basically we try to distinguish here between case study which being is act work, the document would be reflecting an actual case studies based on agile, uh, sorry, based on beyond agile and waterfall. So we will have actual case studies for that. And then we will also have sample project where we are simulating how to apply camp on large and complex project until we have an opportunity where a client might be willing to share with us information on large and complex project and the application of CAMP. So basically I will end this. Uh, I know this, is, uh, this video has been more than an introduction to, to the book. It's really about, the book is about the methodology, so we must talk about the methodology. Get this book today. Or if you don't want to get it yet, we are offering courses online. We are starting with the first one, is already alive on the PM Quest website. And we'll be, we, we will be doing many other courses that are guided. So basically, if you have a project you want to work on, personal project, company project, get in touch with us. Because one of the courses we'll be offering online, one of the adventure we would like to be offering, is that to help you 
manage a project. So we will be coaching you and guiding you as you work on your project end to end. So we will have different adventures on that. Some of them could be related to the uh, small project or micro project or a personal project or a youth project or maybe a school project. And some of them could be larger and more complex project. So stay in touch. Watch our social media channels and look for what we are offering you. And hopefully you will believe that we are offering you one of the best things that is coming into project management. Thank you.